Alright, welcome back ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We got game number two here, of course, coming at you. Sweet Like Ice take it on Willow Keeper. In game number two, Sweet Like Ice scores up one game to nothing. It was a very close game number one. It, it, it really was. I mean, again, that last fight really determined in the game to an extent. And uh, Sweet Like Ice was able to break through and ultimately take the victory. So, thus, uh, they have that one nothing lead once again. And... Looking to move along. By the way, I didn't have an update. I was able to look at the standings here for uh, for season two. And again, made the point earlier that you know got to be top 17 to, of course, make the playoffs. And actually, uh, Sweet Like Ice, they're 14th right now, and Willow Keeper is actually currently 10th place. So, uh, the both these teams are set up in the position to be making the playoffs. And uh, I mean, even already getting this far in the Diamond Division gets you some decent points. So. Uh, I believe they should be in a pretty good place to actually qualify for the playoffs and not have to worry about not qualifying. At this point, again, it's just maybe getting a little bit higher as far as the seeding goes to get a little bit better position. So there's that. And then, of course, there's, there's always a $10,000 prize pool on the line here, as there is every cycle uh, for Han Tour. So money always a good thing, too. All right, moving along with the picks, though. Let's take a closer look. We have the Warbeast, Ophelia, Wretched Hag, Pestilence bands coming out here. The first pick, Keep of the Force, followed by Tempest, cracking into Bubbles, Rhapsody, Yet again, going to be picked up this time by Sweet Like Ice, though. And look at that. Willow Keeper going the Moon Queen pick up right here with their third and final pick. So, uh, yeah, you can definitely look at the last game as well. And, and you know, no doubt that's, that's, that's a, you know, kind of going for the scapegoat factor of, well, they picked up Kronos. We never see him. They ran up Suicide for that matter. It didn't work out. They ended up losing in the end. I, I mean, I think he had potential, though. I mean, he actually started to get some pretty good farm. His suicide presence, it was definitely a little weak. Uh, but and a lot of that had to do with the matchup. Again, Slither is a very, very strong hero to go up against. But, you know, in definitely other cases, I can see actually Kronos having potential somewhat in that uh, in that role. Whether or not he would be the most go-to choice over heroes like a Grinix, a Scout even, uh, Madman even, as we've been seeing, you know, stuff like that. No, that's definitely arguable, but it was cool to see something outside of the box with that said. And again, the ultimate synergy with him, Wretched Hag and Tempest especially, was most certainly there with the threat. But in the end, they weren't really able to execute it the best, able to pull it off, and obviously didn't help their chances of, uh, of winning that game. So, they're going to go the Moon Queen route this time around. So yet again, making sure to get that very hard carry here taken care of. I doubt it's going to be a suicide moon queen <laughs> with that said. Hey, you know, I was kind of hoping that we might finally see this uh, this whole Cersei moon queen combination that Diglett especially brings up and likes to talk about, but it ain't going to be happening. And I think I think Sweet Like Ice was also maybe aware of that as well. They're like, yeah, we, we don't want to give you the Cersei moon queen because uh, as, as Stiglitz was talking about, I mean, the combination is pretty ridiculous as far as power potential. Uh, the fact that you can just use that doppelganger, oh, make the illusions of the Moon Queen constantly, and that mid to late game and push towers with the illusions alone is pretty ridiculous. So, um, And especially with the glaives bouncing around and whatnot. So not wanting to do it with that combo potential. So they ban out the Cersei, understandably. Uh, Grenix, Slither, Torture, Corrupted, and Dr. Repulsor, of course. The other bans. Dr. Repulsor, yeah, definitely another interesting one there. As far as the banning phase goes, but uh, taken out by Willow Keeper. So again, definitely perhaps one of those cases of Sweet Like Ice maybe has a player that is known for playing a Doctor Pulsar, so doesn't want to give it to them. Final pick going to be coming out for uh, Sweet Like Guys eventually. We have the fourth pick now to come for Willow Keeper, but Parasite obviously picked up right there. So the fact that a jungle option L even in Parasite was left open that long, pretty good news. That does mean they are going to be running more of a Keeper Suicide. And again, he did get hit pretty hard as far as the Suicide Presence. We've been seeing a lot more Keeper Junglers lately as a result of that. So a little bit uh, of a risk here somewhat from uh, Sweet Like Guys, but in the end, I'm sure they can make it work out. Willow Keeper is still trying to think about this fourth pick. Wow! They are going to go Kronos again. How about that? <laughs> they, so talk about sticking to your guns, man. I mean, again, a very different strategy. They feel confident that they could actually make it work this time around again. Again, it wasn't a bad pick. And uh, like I said, I did like the idea of the ultimate synergy. And then they definitely got a bit of that here once again. Uh, Bubbles, Tempest, Kronos. My, my, now, I am a little worried when it comes to Ultimate Synergy that they don't have the most burst damage with it. Like, Wretched Hag at least last game provided that damage in the AoE sense. This time around, I mean, Moon Queen could be, but it is very RNG-reliant, of course, as far as the balances and whatnot. The right-click and Rift Walker, I mean, she definitely has potential to bring some damage to the table for that Ultimate Synergy, but she is also going to be ran as a support in this case and going to be under-leveled as a result. So, I, I mean, I can appreciate the idea that Willow Keeper's going for it with this great, crazy Ultimate Synergy and T5 potential, but, you know, will it actually accomplish what they're looking for in the end? It's a big question mark. 
Monarch being right clicked. Now, Monarch's another interesting hero, actually. Uh, mainly against the likes of a Keeper of the Forest, Whoa. and they are going to go Monarch. Oh, I love this team all of a sudden. I really love Willow Keeper now. They are not afraid to try different things, and again, that's, that's you got to love that. You know, when I was looking for a loose's bracket round two matchup and cast here uh, to kick things off for today, you know, a lot, especially in this round. This round, I really try to get ideally teams that maybe we don't get to see as much because uh, that's just how it shapes up. And, you know, to give them a little bit of spotlight here, they are in the Diamond Division, deserving of it. And this is another reason why, too, you know, they, they tend to maybe be a little more open to trying, you know, some pretty crazy strategies and some, some different hero picks. So Monarch, I mean, I cannot remember the last time a Monarch was picked on the competitive scene, and it's going to be tried here by uh, by Willow Keeper. So, again, you got to respect that. And But uh, the point I was getting at with the new ultimate, or, yeah, yeah, I guess they, they didn't change the ultimate, make it even a little more powerful as far, I believe it's the, uh, the, the amount of units it actually uh it affects as well as it starts from behind her as well. So, um, but it's it's a great anti keeper of the force tool. And you know we have this discussion where we were talking about the passion, talking about her specifically. Is why we didn't actually see her in in, in the meta game um, in terms of where keeper of the force was just so powerful and made and, and and the root obviously is just a very very strong ability. When monarch basically counters that and by pressing her ultimate and it counters it you know on her teammates as well as herself. So. It came down to, I think, that a lot of it was the idea that, you know, in the landing phase, maybe she's more of a defensive style of hero with her, uh, with her chrysalis especially. She got a lot of, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember exactly all the changes that she got, but, uh, I'm actually going to see if I can pull up the patch notes right here just to make sure. Um, it's, uh, apparently, there are some server issues, obviously, so. They're making sure to. They want to remake, but. Uh, so they're going to talk this out. If they don't remake, though, then so be it. And we move on. Again, I'm just trying to find, see if I can find that patch, actually. Um, I thought that was a link to the patch notes, but I guess not. we got to find a different one. But yeah, I want to double check on uh, the Monarch changes that actually did happen. We do see a little bit of initiation here from Kronos actually coming out. He's going to. Run into uh, a little bit of pressure, and I think he should be fine. But yeah, kind of just uh, let him know what's up, and not going to give him some free roam right there by any means. So, uh, patch 3.3. Where the hell are you? I cannot find patch 3.3 for the life of me. Anyways, the point being, Monarch did get some buffs here, and uh, in, in that recent balance patch, I believe all across the board. I believe the, the Noxious Cloud even got buffed up, if I'm not mistaken. So. Um, the crippling pollen is is a strong tool. The single target obviously silence on top of some damage as well, so as well as providing a mini stun. Um, that so you know for some, the canceling channeling as well as a homecoming stones can be powerful for that as well. Um, seems like she has potential to be a great babysit hero and could definitely be good against keeper of the force. He's easy keeper again. He's being annoying as always and pulling with those animated trees. But yeah, no, point being, I'm excited to see this monarch and the impact that he ultimately does have this game. Now again, he is playing a babysit support as you would expect. Um, so it's going to take, as far as levels go and farm especially, you know, not going to be the most, but we'll see what kind of ultimate impact he does have, or she, I guess, with uh, with her abilities and whatnot. But again, the Chrono Suicide once again coming out here from Willow Keeper. This time it's going up against a Rhapsody Dark Lady. I think I'm so focused on the Monarch. Forgot to mention that we have a Dark Lady in this game being picked up by Sweet Light Guys. And in fact, they're going to go in right here somewhat. Kronos is out of mana. He needs 120, though. So he just about has it. And I wonder if they realized that. They would have actually gone in right there. But uh, he does have enough mana now. So he should be fine in terms of uh, being able to time leap away if it calls for it. But obviously, after the second time leap, he'll need to be careful about getting, getting harassed because won't be able to do it again after that. So... You need to be very careful about that circumstance. You got the top lane situation, of course. Monica again doing a good job of boxing out Keeper. Just going to keep those auto attacks up and crippling pollen when need be. Uh, Kronos actually getting uh, Rhapsody low, but Rhapsody activates a health potion. And now Kronos might be in some trouble. He doesn't have a time leap right here. If they can maybe get a Staccato stun off. She does have it up. Can't get a range though. Taint Soul is going to be coming in one second. There's a Taint Soul. Staccato stuns to follow. And this should be a kill out of Kronos. No, it's not going to be enough. He will survive. The final auto attack from Dark Lady. She couldn't stay in range to get it off right there. 
and Kronos barely lives. The Iron Shield most certainly have an effect right there as far as uh, as far as that item build is concerned. So <laughs> about to pause coming out of here, of course. But uh, Kronos will live. <laughs> will live in the long run. So good for him. It's about damn time. Seriously, that 20-second pause is about damn time, man. Uh, but yeah, so about the matchups, again, you got Dark Lady set up to free farm that bottom lane for the most part. The middle matchup, kind of an interesting one here. The fact that we even have a true 1v1 again is pretty cool to see, but Kraken versus Bubbles going at it. Uh, of course, Kraken, especially with the hatch, you know, he's definitely a one that can get those last hits in there with that and the splash ability, so he is getting that 15 and 2 creep farm. Bubbles is currently 15 and 0, so a pretty even grief farm here. Not, again, not too surprising, especially with the last of potential of Kraken. Keep it the forest top lane is going to live right here. Moon Queen thought about chasing, but decided not to. The vision was just a little bit too much right there. And didn't want to have to dive to the tower for a kill, so keep the forest is going to be fine in the end. But speaking of that top matchup, I assume Moon Queen, just like Dark Lady, having some great times. 16 and 8. You compared to Dark Lady, he's 18 and 11. So Dark Lady, the slight advantage there, but of course going up against a keeper, a little bit different than going up against a Kronos, as far as uh, as far as your potential and getting the creep farms in there. So not again, it's not too often we get this hard carry versus hard carry either. The Moon Queen versus a Dark Lady. Hell, we even have a Kronos in here, so we really have three hard carry potential heroes. Uh, in this game. Again, not often we get that at all, but happens to be the case here. Man, I really want to find those patch notes. I don't know why I can't find them, because the patch 3.3... Oh, you no, know, it wouldn't be under there. Patch 3.3.1, but I can't find the Fortified Arsenal patch. Uh, again, maybe... Someone can link for me, perhaps. But keep it the fourth section top lane. He is going to fall. Bloodlust kill comes out. Tempest coming in with a final auto attack to do so. Bottom lane in the meantime. Kronos leaps away to survive. He is going to take a taint. So right here, he got greedy. He went for that last creep kill. He will be fine, though. Rhapsody could not get in range for another staccato stun. And uh, Boxy living life on the edge, but he does stay alive, ultimately. So... <laughs> Very, very close, but obviously Bloodless Kill again on to keep it the forest. Good job at the top lane, and Moon Queen, her farm, definitely jumping up. Tempest especially, 390 gold per minute right now. Coming out for him, just about at least. So, yeah. He's currently only sitting on the Ring of the Teacher, which is kind of funny to see with the amount of farm that he has, but I assume the Ring of Sorcery going to be picked up as soon as there you go. As soon as the Curry goes back, he gets the Ring of Sorcery. And is going to have that delivery now. Possibly a push going to be happening at the top lane as a result of all that. Monarch's build, he does have two points of the Crippling Pauling. Gets the one in Chrysalis and one in a Noxious Cloud. Again, I'm thinking it might be trying to gank a Keeper right there. They use a Dust Charge even, but as you can see on the mini-map, Keeper the Forest was nowhere nearby. So, not going to happen. Kronos bottom lane again, being pressured this time. It might actually be a kill. He does have rewind, but it's not going to work. And down he falls. So, you know, he's been living life on the edge of this bottom lane a lot. It was it was a matter of time, honestly, <laughs> before he, he eventually died. So, good execution there. Coming out by Sweet Light Guys. And keep on trying to eventually get the kill, obviously. So, well played. Kronos, or excuse me, Dark Lady, 340 gold per minute. She is slightly ahead of the Spoon Queen here, as far as GPM goes. So Marcus Moy, trying to be on the ball with making sure that he's getting all his last hits. Uh, going to compare the two, 33 and 15 Dark Lady. You got a 33 and 14 Moon Queen. Look at again, ballsy Kronos right here. He knows that they're low on mana, and Rhapsody not even here currently. So trying to get that pressure onto Dark Lady. But here comes Parasite. Vagabond comes out. He actually mana burns Kronos. To the point where he can't actually uh, time leap just yet, but Kraken's level seven. He's farming about 315 GPM and has that advantage over Bubbles here so far. Parasite coming in level six actually. They want to make something happen here and not gonna go for it though. A little bit too far away. Life tube just purchased by Dark Lady, so she is well on her way now. To the rune cleaver, of course. So this top push that it was talking about. Finally going to be coming together, it looks like. Level 4 elementals are here. You got Ring of Sorcery used, and into the tower they go. Keeper the Force hasn't even been at the top lane for a little bit. He's just been farming the jungle in the meantime. Just 
definitely should be a free tower kill at the top lane. There you go. Seven and a half minutes in. Bubbles coming out right here. Double damage rune, actually. He is level seven, and actually, oh, he needs to be careful. Here comes the Leiji. Will use a Kelpio Song of the Sea. Face Saga is going to come out, though. And down goes Bubbles right there. The Song of the Sea Silence. And only level one, so it only lasted, obviously, 0.1 seconds. So they were easily able to use their ability shortly after and pick up the kill on a bubble. So there was a TP coming in, but that was quickly canceled as soon as they realized. Uh, he was not going to be living through that one. So good gank set up from Parasite. Bottom lane again. Kronos taking some more pressure. Rewind Procket a little bit right there. Helping to keep him alive. Again, that's what helps make him good in, in a case like this. And time leaps back in, actually. I just love how ballsy he plays it, too. <laughs> he is not afraid to time leap aggressively. Uh, granted, he does have a death so far, but... You know, it was only the one death. Now the bottom lane... Uh, there we go. As it is going to be pushed in. Bubbles, here we go. Kronosville lands. Parasite got, did not get hit, though. And Bubbles was not going to follow that up. Not too sure what they were thinking, because Bubbles actually didn't have a kill field there. And he was the only other one, so, I mean, if their goal was just to delay the tower push a little bit longer, sure, I guess. But that was kind of an interesting uh, decision there to use that Kronos field, because uh, either that or just simply lack of communication. I mean, even if he had a Kel field, though, that would have been a very risky jump right there from the two. So, you know, maybe he figured he wasn't going to be using the Kronos field in the next, what is it, 110 seconds, 120 second cooldown. So, yeah, it could be very possible, so. Just delaying it ever so slightly before they eventually get the tower kill. Tempest remains on top, though. 400 gold per minute for him now. Neither Moon Queen or Darkhood are really exploding off. I mean, 350 GPM for both of them here, so that's remaining to be pretty even. And, uh, Dark Vinny, though, once she gets that Rune Cleaver, of course, that's what really starts to jump up. I guess the point for Moon Queen would be more of that Whispering Helm pickup, which is just about here as well. She has a Helm of the Victim currently. Not going to be going the Energizer first. Going to choose to go right into the Helm of the Victim, or Spring Helm, it looks like. Before that bottom lane, again, Kronos going to be jumping right here. Leech comes down the face, not going to follow in. Fifth spell, aka Archie Tiger, will get credit for the kill right there. So, again, Kronos. That wasn't necessarily playing ballsy right there. That was more so just a good gank setup from, uh, from Parasite. That time around. They're going to try to counter here in the middle lane in the meantime. Tempest joining them. You got Bubbles and Monarch here. Monarch only level 5 still, so doesn't have those cleansing wins just yet. It is maxing out a Crippling Pollen first, by the way. So that'll get her max duration on the stun, as well as even a little more damage. and Slightly more mana cost, of course, but uh, definitely worth it. Chrysalis, again, always an interesting ability, too. Um... And in cases, obviously, against uh, something like your Moon Queen, where she's being jumped on, being able to Chrysalis her up, uh, prevent some damage done to her by, what is it, 30 or 50% reduced damage. And it even heals her while in it. And I want to say that actually used to be di different in terms of the amount of damage it reduced per level, and they made it a flat 50. Maybe that was one of the changes, too. So, But anyways... Uh, this middle tower right here, actually Monarch is going to jump in on it. Keep it the force. Here comes the follow-up for Kronos. The good initiates from Bubbles as well. Keep it the force. This is going to end up dropping. Monarch hits level 6 in the process. So we'll see if those cleansing wins come to play right here. Parasite, though, he's trying to get away. Protect him. Now he was, he was not necessary in the end. As Parasite just takes over Ballista, though, and runs away. But again, all five are here now for the Hellborn team. 10 seconds resurrection on Keeper. If he can maybe resurrect and port in right here, if they have a vulnerability, that could be possible. Uh, not going to go for it. Dust comes out just in case. But the rest of the team is going to be on the run. You do see Dark Lady. She is pushing the bottom lane in the meantime. So, yeah, not going to be going for any uh, any extra push there. And that will be the end of that. But Dark Lady, she's got the sustainer. Another 800 gold saved up. So, again, the Rune Cleaver needs the two broadswords now. 2,400 gold exactly to be able to finish that. And actually picks up the Vagabond Leader right there. That happened to be controlled by Moon Queen, and that's got to be annoying. You know, one of those cases, taking over the Vagabond Leader to stack the Ancients for herself and not have to worry about somebody else doing it, but a free kill for Dark Lady and also takes that advantage away. But as we're talking about, you know, with the Whispering Hell finish on Moon Queen, can allow her to go in the jungle more aggressively now and take advantage of taking out some stacks here even. Good job by Monarch right there. Good teamwork. Granted, Tempest is uh, taking one of the stacks, so understandable there. That's where it gets a little bit tough as far as that decision-making goes. Granted, uh, at the same time, though, I mean, they do have a Parasite here on 
the Legion team. And also Keeper has been in their jungle quite a bit. So the idea of stacking for Dark Liddy uh, with the Rune Cleaver. We'll see if that actually comes into play. Maybe the Ancients, if anything, definitely need, need to start to be stacked here. Because uh, the Rune Cleaver in the next couple of minutes could very likely be picked up by her. So, of course, you want to get that timing down precise. As soon as she gets it, heads over to the triple stack ancients and really enhances the farm. So we'll see if that execution comes through or not. Moon Queen, though, 411 gold per minute now. Again, not going the Energizer route. Doing that early Whispering Helm and now possibly on the way to uh, Firebrand. Seems to be the more of a traditional build here. Don't see why it'd be different in this case. Another way to get out of the Keeper route with a full Geometer's main and then into a shortcut head even on top of that. The other ability that can be knowing here too is of course the cover of darkness from Dark Lady. And getting rid of that effect with both the Shrunken and the Geometers being good. But that's also another thing too with the Monarch. I mean, yet another ability. We're so focused on the Keeper route, but the uh, the cover of darkness from Dark Lady, which is a very annoying ability to go on. Any player that goes up against the Dark Lady will tell you that. As a spectator, again, I always like to point out, you know, for us it's very hard to see what's actually happening, but as a player, you know the feeling against that ultimate from Dark and how annoying it can be. Having those cleansing wins to just purge that off immediately. It's also another very useful tool of it, so. What does the staff effect do? It increases the touch radius and triggers an additional time. Okay. Interesting. Uh, portal key picked up by Kraken right there. Corona's jumping in. They do deny the tower, but Parasite just a little too quick. They will catch Keeper, though. With the Kelfield, do they have dust? They do. Dust comes out, but they're not going to really follow it. They know uh, they might have been jumping into a trap right there, and they did not have Moon Queen with him. So they play that pretty safe despite using some cooldowns. Only the Kelfield, really, so not the biggest deal in the world. In the meantime, Rhapsody has a homecoming stone and nothing else. <laughs> Always have to see that on support heroes especially. The true support right here. Not even boots. Not even boots. Rune Cleaver, it's just about there. 200 more gold will have it. They're not stacking the ancients, though. Again, don't like to see that. Especially when you have a Dark Lady farming that Rune Cleaver. Rhapsody is heading over here now. She does have some wards on her. Possibly going to check to see if there's any vision. There's a ward aside here in the middle lane, but obviously not seeing the ancients right there. We'll rev ward over here on the statue. Not going to happen, though. Not going to stack the inches? Okay, she is going to stack the inches. I was going to say that would be pretty brutal, but no. Going to at least double stack it here for Dark Lady as she gets that Rune Cleaver. Have that ready to go. 1,600 gold saved up on Bubbles. So a portal key is uh, in the works here. But no, so it's kind of an interesting spot here now, though, for Willow Keeper. Usually this would be the start of that timer now. With that Rune Cleaver pickup on Dark Lady, as we saw, I mean, yesterday for Nox playing with Team Excellent against Team NK. She gets that Rune Cleaver, as it's happened in the past, as it happened yesterday, it takes off, and before you know it, the game can finish. They do have a Moon Queen, though. That's getting some pretty good farm. So we're going to definitely see a classic battle here. But again, carry versus carry. Both teams have great potential in team fights. Um, I, I mean, I if I had it, shoot, and honestly, I would say maybe the Hellborn team, but again, you got Kraken, you got Rhapsody with the Protective Melody. Very defensive ultimate, just like the Cleansing Winds of Monarch. So, I mean, both sides definitely have a lot of potential in these fights. It's going to come down to definitely the execution and the initiation, and also that helps. A pick off on a parasite at the top lane as he was trying to get away, not able to do so. Firebrand finished on Moon Queen, and they're going to kind of get a ball going here. They got four players at the top lane. Monarch, the only one not with them, so a little bit awkward. She is pushing the bottom lane in the meantime, but they're just going to go for the top push here. They still know Dark Hoodie is pretty weak at this point, even with the Moon Cleaver pickup, just that farming tool. Not wanting to get into team fights just yet, so. But they're not going to go for the tower kill in the end. They, uh, they are just going to play it safe. And I feel like they could have actually gone man mode there. No the secondary tower at least. Maybe look to try to pick a fight. Because right now, if anything, they do have the advantage in these fights. But again, not having Monarch there was probably the one key. If they had Monarch there, maybe they would have gone for it. But not having the uh, cleansing winds, as well as the chrysalis for that matter, could have been pretty brutal. Chrysalis does also somewhat of a dangerous ability at the same time. And again, it's, it's a great saving ability with the 50% damage reduction and the heal on it. But at the same time, you know, if your Moon Queen is expecting to do something with, uh, so, say, if she gets a Geometer's Man wanting to use that or, you know, whatever else wants to position herself in a certain way and you end up using it on her, she can't move. It's like, oh, crap. So you got to definitely be a little, a little careful about using that ability. But definitely communication, obviously, going to be key. 
when it comes to that as well. Very similar to something like a Storm Spirit in that sense, so. I guess not too much different. Steam Boots picked up by Kronos right there, so again, he hasn't had the brightest farm this game. Uh, understandable. Moon Queen's been taking most of that, and that is also an interesting point how, you know, Kronos, the idea of Kronos building for carry here probably doesn't make much sense. The, he's just, I would think, honestly, even something like a Staff of the Master would it be the worst idea for uh, for Kronos here with the way they're playing him. And that Suicide Kronos, they have a Moon Queen getting all the farm. As I say this, we have Initiation coming out. They're going to be jumping Kronos, but the Rewind Prox! And he easily will tank up that damage. <laughs> yeah, no chance right there. The Leech, uh, <laughs> the Leech base combo was basically negated by Rewind right there. And Kronos is like, no big deal. As he just walks away. So any initiation attempt is basically foiled right there from the Legion side. Again, though, going back to the point of Kronos, I would like to see something like maybe even a Staff of the Master. And it's honestly a pretty powerful tool. Um, increases the duration. Uh, and it was good as well as the allies are just slowed instead of frozen in it, which could definitely be very helpful for setting up a Tempest Ultimate even inside of it or whatnot. So, um, we'll see what uh, what eventually goes for. That was my Facebook, by the way. I do apologize. I know people freak out about that. Like, I just checked my Facebook, Frankie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll close that. Got people notifying me and stuff. All right, uh, Monarch is in an interesting spot. Just getting delivered a ward right there. They might have sell the courier though, so they expect something's up. And yeah, they are just going to fall back. So trying to be a little sneaky right there, and unfortunately not going to be able to follow through with it. How is Dark Lady coming along though? Looks like uh, she was trying to maybe apply some pressure to Kronos, but instead just going to continue to farm. Uh, she has a hungry spirit, so that Abyssal Scroll in the works here. Her GPM 430, but Moon Queen is still staying slightly ahead at 450 gold per minute here. Yeah, the notes actually links to the patch 3.31 patch notes. And obviously I was looking for... Uh, the Fortified Arsenal patch notes. But anywho, keeping the fourth push in the top lane right there. As uh, they are going to get that top tower push successfully. Counter push coming out though in the meantime in the bottom lane. As, okay, I think I actually have them right here. <laughs> And I've kind of been looking for the. Okay, that's right. So now that we're 20 minutes into this game, I actually have an idea of what those changes were. Uh, I'll get to them in just a moment. But, anyways, double damage. Kronos, he's going to jump in. Yeah, put a Curse of Aegis stun on a crack and get him to charge away. So they are going to fight at this top lane, at least fight them off right here. But Legion team not going to look to get invested into a fight. And they will fall back. So there's been a lot of dodging this game. I mean, both teams, I. I I, I can kind of get that idea again. Both teams probably respect one another in terms of the uh, the initiation factor and in terms of the team five potential, as well as having the hard carry presence. So they know that one uh, one lost fight with some with a couple of ultimates coming together could mean could mean the game just like it was last game. So they're being very very timid in terms of uh, the fights they pick and choose here. Full geometer's bane is finished on Moon Queen though, of course very good. That abyssal skull on Dark Lady cleaning up some more ancients uh, does have. Another 1,800 gold actually saved up on top of that. So, as I was talking about with Monarch, though, so again, uh, finally got some of the changes here. Uh, it was the crippling polling. The range was actually increased as well as the projectile speed decreased from 1,200 to 800. Uh, so, you know, and buffing that as well. Uh, Chrysalis, the duration from 4 to 3 seconds. However, the heal was reskilled. Uh, to be a little bit more powerful. So, instead of lasting 4 seconds, it only lasts 3 seconds. But again, a little bit powerful if you heal. Uh, damage reduction, yeah, it was reskilled as well to 50% at all levels instead of 30, 40, 50, 60. The Noxious Cloth's radius was increased. And then Cleansing Winds, the width was it was increased as well. So every single ability actually got touched up there on Monarch. Uh, again, so definitely receiving some good buffs across the board. So there we go. Finally found out what those, uh, what those exact changes were right there. Dark Lady has overtaken the GPM charts now. As far as uh, beating Moon Queen here. So 
So next in line for Moon Queen, and thinking the uh, the shrunken head, of course. There's many reasons to want to get that. The Keeper dealing with the Parasite, obviously, coming with the Kraken, Ultimate and whatnot, and then, of course, there's even Darkling with those Dark Blades charging in, silencing you. You can have remove that, very useful, so. And it's just the go-to build for Moon Queen. So, yeah, I know I'm not uh, going out on a stretch here. <laughs> Say, Shrunken Head's probably going to be next, but that's probably what's going to be next. Uh, I'm still very intrigued what Kronos goes for. Granted, his farm's only 200 gold per minute, so the, even even if he was going to be going for something like a Staff of the Master, it's it wouldn't, unfortunately, be happening for a while, if that was the case. Speaking of more utility items, of course, the Astral Labor against Sorcerer and Tempest. He did go the Ghost Marches here. He has another 1,400 gold saved up. So, he, I was going to say, Shrunken Head is not going to be close just yet. He does get the Mighty Blade, though, so it is going to be Shrunken Head, it looks like, as far as his item pickup. I mean, they have... Three different ways to stop it, though, even if he has a shrunken head. So I'm at the point of almost, is that even worth it? Would you rather just invest into a portal key at this point? Uh, and maybe maybe go that route instead, or maybe even something like a tablet of command to help uh, with some support, you know, minus for state green. Of course, he's known for more utility items like that, kind of going the feel of the game and whatnot with the build. So, uh, But uh, it looks like Fuse ain't going to play the safe route and just go the shrunken head here. As far as this pickup is concerned. So again, a lot of movement together here. You see the bottom lane now, cracking with a portal key. They're kind of grouped up. Dark Hoodie is not with him, but doing a little bit of split pushing. But if you're the Hellboard side, you see Dark Hoodie pushing top. You really want to make a jump happen right here, and they are setting up. Kraken is not going to go any further, though. Oof. Man, they probably should have taken the risk right there, but again, it's... Don't want to overdo it. Dark Hoodie actually ports back to base in the meantime. But again, she still isn't actually with the team. But uh, they are not really showing themselves either. So Moon Queen's just going to pick up farm in the lane. And instead try to finish that shrunken head himself. Speaking of that, Dark Lady obviously finishing her own right there. As far as that pickup goes. Parasite has a, at least a level 1 codex. Not able to check it right now. This is currently an ice ogre. <laughs> Has actually applying the buff to Kraken right there, and they may be trying to jump Kronos, but no. Very, uh, very safe player from both teams. Are they going to actually jump him now, though? I think they are. Yep, here we go. No, the charge misses. The timely been successful. He tried to time it right there. It wasn't going to happen. So Kronos uh, timely leaves away. This bottom tower easily destroyed. And that will be the end of that. And now they're going to start breaking into the base, perhaps. Dark Lady is here with them. You see the Frost... Uh, Frost armor applied to him as well. Only five more seconds, though, so not a big deal. Kraken going to be in the uh, the front lines here, but now falling back, and understandably not going to want to get invested into a base fight. N don't want to give any advantage to the other team in, in what is such an even game, and you know, fighting into the base would obviously do just that. So. You know, maybe going to try to get the Congor going, but, you know, being the Legion side, obviously, at a little bit of disadvantage there. Especially when the game's so even. Vision is in favor of the Legion team, actually. They do have some pretty aggressive points up, and here we go. We finally have some initiation. Tempest going to be jumping right here in the background. Dark Lady goes on a corner off to the side. Tempest locked down. Chrysalis comes out, barely keeping him alive. He is going to fall, though, when it's all said and done. Split him right there with the Geometer's Band out of the root coming out. Cleansing Winds is used by Monarch. Rhapsody going to be bursting out right there. The Moon Finale doing a lot of damage here, but given the Force Speed, it's also tanking bloody. Monarch does fall. Dark Lady, she now gets locked down. Chrono Spear comes out finally. Moon Queen is out of it. The Glaives are bouncing around. Parasite's going to go down, and Dark Lady now needs to get the hell on out of there. Chronos and Moon Queen, they pick off Keeper. Hatchrick for Moon Queen. Cannot stop Dark Lady, though. She gets out just in time. And that's how the fight will end. So both teams get three kills in total. But I think you got to maybe get this advantage to Willow Keeper specifically because of that hat trick, of course, coming out for Moon Queen. So pretty much every ultimate in the book was used. I mean, not really, actually. Tempest ultimate wasn't used. Kelfield wasn't used. Uh, Release the Kraken didn't come out. No particular melody. So actually a lot of ultimates weren't used in that fight. Very curious about that. Uh, we're, we're not able to find the right timings for them and whatnot, but... In the end, Moon Queen stays alive. Her farm now, another 1,500 gold saved up. And actually, she has something to be delivered. Okay, just a homecoming stone, but... Oh, he finally had a big fight coming out right there. Ends up being a 3 for 3. And maybe going to attempt Congo themselves now. Having the Hellborn advantage, obviously. 
Let's have a double. Oh, I thought she had a double damage for a second, but no. Just food me, beat me. Conqueror, about half life currently. But is gonna live. Again, Tempest Ultimate is still up. Keeper is still down for another 20 seconds here. They do have release the Kraken, but they most certainly want that Keeper Root. Now 10 more seconds, Kongor is not dropping the fastest, they really only have Food Queen on him right now. Kronos is trying to get in there, Parasite runs in with his Kelsk King, Kronos the charge misses for Kraken, Shrunken it goes up and here we go, Dark Lady jumps on the Kronos in the background, Rewind's not going to be now, Cleansing Winds comes out, there's our Temple Limit, Pot the Root comes out, protecting Melody off to the side, and this time the Legion team has the advantage, Moon Queen kills Kongor, he gets the token of life, but at what cost right here, he's going to put in the auto attacks, tries to stay alive as long as possible, the Whispering Helm with the life steal. it isn't enough though, he does get bursted down, Dark Lady coming in, Dark Lady going, Moon Finale though comes out, and Dark Lady realizes this was a horrible mistake, she gets turned, and the rest are yet again going to run away. There was a buyback on Kronos, but that is the only buyback. And Keeper of the Force ports back to base. So, yeah, the man-up mode there from Dark Lady. I think it was one of those cases, as soon as she went in, she was like, wait a second, this is probably a really bad idea. Because she was banking on that. She did not have a Moon Finale on Moon Queen, and sure enough, Moon Queen did. And Dark Lady got completely bursted down, so... Uh, the Cleansing Winds was used a little early from what I could tell. The Keeper Root came out after it. So maybe a little bit preemptive there from Monarch. But in the end, they win the fight. That's what matters. The tower falls. And now they're going to start pushing into the base. Moon Queen does have a Quick Blade purchase mark. Excuse me, a Dancing Blade purchase on the way to that Wing Bow, most likely, of course. And going to be good with that. So now we try for Kraken. Release the Kraken. Parasite helping the first Moon Queen. Will be burst it down here. And here's another fight back from the Legion team. Dark Lady comes out with the Shrunken Head. Kronos is going to drop right here. Moon Queen cannot buy back as a result of buying that Dancing Blade. Bubble's going to try to pour it out. He will be successful. I don't know how they didn't seem, to be honest. But somehow he was not seen. And the rest are going to be fine. But at least they hold at their base. And now they're going to be pushing back. Again, Moon Queen down for 50 seconds. They're pushing. There's no reason why they shouldn't. Tempest ultimate down. Moon Queen's dead for 45. Kronos is dead for another 35 here. They, they're definitely going to get this outer tower. And I would not be surprised if at least they maybe even get the base tower. So, I mean, you thought after that Congra fight, things could definitely be uh, going the way of, uh, <laughs> of Willow Keeper. But uh, Sweet Like Ice is, is, has different plans here. Holding off of the base, and you can definitely question the choice of Willow Keeper to push in like they were when they didn't have as many cooldowns as they had before. But this tower now, it is going to start dropping again. Moon Queen's up in another 10 seconds here, just about. So they are at least going to get the tower, it looks like. As far as staying in for the racks, I don't know about that. It is going to be risky. Tempest Ultimate is still down. Kronos Fears up, though. Here we go. Dark Lady. Oh, she's just out of range. She was able to get her blades off right there. She was just out of range of the Kronos Field. So a misplacement big time from Ox or Boxy. And now we see the Legion team looking to turn back. And Cleansing Winds comes out. The protective melody off to the side. Moon Queen is here. She bursts out Rhapsody. But there's the roof of Keeper. Again, the Cleansing Winds wants her to use. But Keeper was by himself. He's on the run yet again. Dark Lady falls. So another fight back. This time by Willow Keeper. And now Sweet Like Ice is going to fall back and retreat. So both teams. <laughs> it was a very passive game here. Up until about three, four minutes ago. It's now just non-stop slaughter. Back and forth here. And it's now our Hellborn team's turn once again. Now, Dark Lady does have her final buyback here. If she finds it necessary. However, Tempest Ultimate is now up. That is the only ultimate up with that said. But Moon Queen is pretty damn strong right now. Again, the dance away. This is doing a lot of damage. Look at this, though. Keeper the Forest. He's doing a little bit of backdoor in here. Takes up the tower. But not enough for distraction. Tempest in the meantime. Tempest is going to be bursting down. Chrysalis is not enough. Parasite actually steals it right there. And that's a GG for him. Moon Queen. Uh-oh. Moon Queen. Relay. Stop cracking that. Moon Queen will go dead. Are you kidding me? What is going on this game? Moon Queen does have a buyback this time. In fact, her illusions are still killing the racks. As they finally despawn right there. But here we go yet again. Now it's uh, now it's, now it's the Legion team's turn. They're going to go back in. <laughs> They're going to look to push back in here. Again, this time Moon Queen does have a buyback. If anything, though, they want to make her use it. So we'll see if, they, uh, if they're if they able to accomplish that or not. Now, Dark Lady did use.
use her final buyback, so very important to note right there, of course. Not having any more is going to hurt. Into the melee racks, she just tried to strike in. There's the buyback. You need to get the hell on out of there if you're the Legion team. Konos this time, it does connect perfectly. Dark Hood is going to be locked down. Moon Queen coming in with the Moon Beam. Dark Hood is not going to live through this. So, again, they just were a little overzealous there. They, were, they the, the choice to charging strikes like he did uh, to go into the racks was just a very, very over the top, ballsy move from Dark Lady, and that could have cost him the game, if anything. In mid wars, indeed, it really is. <laughs> That's what this has basically been. That is a good point, but. And now it's yet again the Hellborn's team turn to push back in. Dark Hoodie does not have any more buybacks, and obviously, if they've been observant, they can know that, uh, that she does not this game, so. We'll see if that is going to be the case here. As far as that's concerned, but it is going to be the Hellborn's team once again. You got Moon Queen. Uh, with the Dancing Blade here. The, so not going to obviously be buying that wing boat just yet. Had to use the buyback, so. Understandably. D uh, Kronos even managing to hit level 16, by the way. She has about 2,100 gold saved up. <laughs> Sure, what that's about. I mean, the thing is, obviously, if the Hellborn team wins, then uh, we are going to be going to a game three. So, I'm not sure. Uh, I would assume they would be able to get a replacement if that was the case. But obviously, we'll see what the we'll see what the deal is and what they're talking about here. But um, anywho, okay, he's here. Good. Okay, so the Hellborn's team once again. Dark Lady's dead for 48 seconds right now. She is absolutely not coming it's back. It's about damn time. And now here comes the push. Tempest Ultimate is up. Moon Finale is up. So a couple of big ultimates are up here for the Hellborn side. Keeper is dead. Does have a buyback and will have a root when it comes up. But without Dark Lady, can you actually defend this with confidence? I don't know. Man, the racks, they're, they're just going to have to give it up at this point. Yeah, it's, it's at a point where it's you've had so many back and forth that so you got to just say, you know what, screw it. Find habit. We're going to fight you elsewhere when we're actually ready to go full force once again. And not just try to barely break through. So, But this is going to be a huge advantage now for Willow Keeper. Especially with the way this game has been going. Having an actual rack sound is big. They get the bottom tower. Uh, the secondary tower, that is. And they're going to fall back from there. Glowstone just purchased by Chrono, so it looks like he is very possibly going to be going for that staff of the Master that I was talking about. And again, it honestly just makes sense with the, with the way he's building, playing the hero this game around. Uh, staff of the Master could, could prove to be a very effective tool for his Chrono's field this game. So Tempest is getting closer to the shortcut head, but again, I, I don't know if that's really... That's not nearly as impactful as a shrunken head as it is in a lot of other games. It's just there's so many ways to stop it. You got to release a crack and a keeper root, of course. You have parasite, so oh, Moon Queen, she's actually in trouble. Moon Finale is going to be activated though. They try to pick her off, but it's going to prove to be a bad decision. There goes the Kronos field. Down goes Kraken. The Goliaths are just way too strong. Rhapsody is going to be picked off. Parasite's going to end up falling, and what they thought to be maybe a chance right there to pick off Moon Queen obviously wasn't to be. And that is uh, one of those moments where you're also like, uh, yeah, this game might now actually be over. So Moon Queen is going to lead the way, pushing out the bottom lane. She definitely has enough for a wing bow, but again, just making sure that she has enough for the last buyback as well. It's not absolutely needed here. Wing bow. So kind of push bottom now. You do see Keeper of the Force. He's trying to be crafty, push the melee racks. But Bubble's actually going to come in and prevent that from effectively happening. So here go the Glaives to bounce. Coming out from Moon Queen. And uh, again, I understand obviously they're going to sit in here a little bit longer. But now it's you're really far behind. Congor is probably going to be up here in the near future. And there is the full wing bumper just plus a buyback now on Moon Queen on top of it all. So they really are that step ahead now on the Selborne side. <laughs> this game, man, I mean, it went from being a very, very slow game. <laughs> I think we had six hero kills throughout like 25 minutes, and then all of a sudden that it just turned on. <laughs> it really just turned on. It became a, a long-range mid-wars, and 
it just was not going to stop right there until about now. So, again, the Shark had finished the so I'm going to give my opinions on that, though. So, Portal Key actually picked up by Chrono, so never mind. He actually goes a different route here. He wants just the, the pure initiation. Not only has the time leap, but wants to be able to Portal Key in and use the time leap for either chase or maybe get away if need be, but... Again, it, it's not a bad item pick up. You can see where he's thinking with that, so... Bravo, I guess. Uh, Frostburn finished on Dark Liddy. So a solid item, item pickup, but it's it's definitely not a fearsome item by any means at this point in the game. Uh, bottom lane, you do see Monarch and Kronos kind of getting involved somewhat, but not going to be enough. Kraken, oh, he does charge in, and this time he does hit Kronos, but the quick time leap and easily gets away. So <laughs> Kraken trying to make some sort of fight happen, even with Dark hitting way behind. That was pretty risky. I guess Moon Queen was pushing top though, so. Knew that she was missing, she was trying to take advantage of that, but she takes out the last Hatter Tower right there. That's that GPM now, 660 gold per minute, just about, so. She's on her way to even an upgrade on Hell, similar rage here, probably makes the most sense, of course. For uh, Moon Queen now. As far as where she goes. So like guys, they they know that they have to do something here. I mean, look at the base for that matter. Mookwee's like, you know what? If you're just gonna delay it, I'm just gonna push your face. Here we go. Root in the background, coming out from keeping the points. They're just trying to pick up a racks if anything. Crack it, gets some release, crack it off. The pleasant wind comes out though, and now Corona's going full force. Mookwee points back, and guess what? Mookwee is pissed off. Rhapsody's gonna fall. Keeper of the force goes down. He's seen Parasite, not sure what to do. Dark that he tries to charging strikes away. She is successful initially. That's why I said initially, though, she is going to get picked up for the Gorton, and I, I think the White Fly is going to be coming out of here any second. If not, ending the old-fashioned way with an actual World Tree kill, but it looks like uh, Willow Keeper is going to force a third and final game here in this best out of three series over Sweet Light Guys. So, uh, <laughs> again, it's been a fun series, and we're going to get one more game out of it, so excited for that, definitely. And hey, they are going to let it finish the old game. Nothing wrong with that. I respect that. That's, I think people forget that there's actually a way of ending the game without conceding sometimes. <laughs> tree time, that is. So there's the Mega Griefs. And here comes the finish in favor of the Hellborn side. So you see Kraken, he's like, fight me! Oh, well, that's not going to do too much. Moon Queen 8,500 could have saved up now. There you go. Oh, the action you can see it right as his eyes. Padding the stats at the end. Nothing like padding the stats. GG well played. Getting so game number two goes to uh, goes to Willow Keeper there. So uh, I mean, again, it kind of explained there at the you know, the very end of what was already happening, how the how things were playing out, and so not much else to say, I guess, but. Was well, definitely uh, again a very passive slower game early on. We have the carry versus carry. The choice to once again run that Chrono suicide. He, he ended up getting some decent Chronos feels that game, so definitely worked out for them. But also Moon Queen being the big factor that she is was able to do plenty and whatnot. And you know it, it, this game was going to be about team coordination, about the initiation, about using the ultimates appropriately. And I think both sides definitely had their faults at that at times, but I think uh, Willow Keeper definitely performed that just a little better when it came down to it. So.